A very good afternoon to all of you. We are ready to start the afternoon session of Cloud Connect 2012. As we all know, we can talk about cloud all day, but cloud does not really make sense unless we know how to monetize it. In this backdrop, the next topic aptly talks about how cloud is paving the way for business productivity. The speaker for this topic is none other than Sanjay Manchanda, Director, Business Division, Microsoft India. As Director, Business Division, Sanjay is responsible for managing all the in-country business strategy and marketing for Microsoft's business division set of products including the 2007 office system, exchange server, unified communications, Visual as well as Project Pasha. Prior to joining Microsoft, Sanjay co-founded and was the CEO of Bebop, an enterprise software startup in the Silicon Valley. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Sanjay Manchanda. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Yeah? Great. So um, thanks for uh, having me here this afternoon. Uh, I, I know it's always a tough time after lunch. And I see a lot of people have conveniently used some of the back rows, which is always a troubling sign. But hopefully today, this session and the ones after this will serve to wake you up. Um, I know the Cloud Connect um, line of sessions cover literally every aspect of the cloud. What I'm going to talk about um, in the next 25 or 30 minutes or so is the SaaS piece of it. Um, as you know, and I think all of you are fairly familiar with cloud, but where, what started out as a generic term, uh, people have quickly now started looking at the different layers where it makes sense from a business standpoint and from an IT strategy standpoint uh, to be able to apply cloud philosophy, let me call it, um, at different layers of the IT stack. And it starts at the infrastructure, goes to the platform, um, and SaaS. And in, in, to some extent, you could argue that the whole cloud movement started from the top. I think the first instance of a cloud company and a cloud piece of software that everybody adopted um, that everyone will instantly recognize was a CRM in the cloud. And they started off by saying, you know, software, no software. And so to some extent, this is not, a, this is not as though software as a, as a service uh, or that part of the stack is a brand new or newfangled idea. Um, however, like we're finding in, in particular the conversations that I have with CIOs and CXOs all around the country, the types of applications people want to take the cloud um, actually vary by business. And it's just recently that many of these things that I'm going to talk about over the last, I would say, 18 months or so are increasingly be beginning to be the things that they want to take to the cloud first. You'll often hear the term cloud productivity. The actual right term, though, is productivity in the cloud. Cloud productivity could have a different um, uh, notion. Let me start a little bit and, you know, by what we see often, and you will probably relate to this, of why people go to the cloud, but also why they sometimes are skeptical about going to the cloud. And I call them drivers and inhibitors. Um, these are fairly high level, but really, really common and extremely consistent in the feedback that we get from almost everybody we talk to. With one difference, when it comes to the driver, everyone thinks about going to the cloud very simply. The primary reason for going to the cloud is going to be cheaper. I think many of you have probably realized that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, and I'll give you examples that where that can be the case, but it is a very simplistic view of the value of what going to the cloud can bring. I think as companies have, and I've heard this from a lot of um, our customers, I hear this in other uh, sources as well, in other forums, 
I think as companies have started embarking on the cloud journey and recognized what the true business benefits can be, they actually quickly come up with the first one, agility. It's an overused word, overloaded term, sounds a little fluffy, but in today's context where every company almost is distributed, has a very mobile and distributed workforce, uh, and is constantly competing with new and emerging players uh, because moving from one country to the other, expanding globally, uh, becoming from a small company to a larger company is a lot easier than it might have been a decade ago. Um, businesses do have to be very agile. And part of what they've learned is to be agile means that your systems and IT have to be able to adapt quickly, uh, way more quickly than we were used to with the on-premise world. So I would say that the people that are looking today and going forward are quickly realizing that apart from looking at just the economics of the cloud, how much money can I save, they have to start evaluating how much is it helping my business really become agile to move and change quickly. And then the second thing is focus, and, and that means different things. The focus is really which part of IT are you, um, you know, are you looking at, which kinds of applications, which part of your IT infrastructure are you trying to um, you know, change or evolve or fine tune, and at that point, the cloud either makes sense or it doesn't. At the same time, while there might be many, many reasons, the number, like these top three things come up time and time again. Uh, and this ranges from a business, a large global corporation, all the way down to a, uh, you know, a small or medium business that's looking at the cloud. Um, and and I'm, in this instance, I'm talking about the public cloud, not the private cloud. And the number one thing that comes up uh, is security, I would say by far. Second is compliance. And by compliance, I mean things like data privacy. Uh, and this is true for a banking institution that's got a lot of customer data, I mean, uh, you know, proprietary information, uh, very sensitive financial information, but also for any company that's uh, dealing with customer data of their own. Uh, because there are laws now that, you know, make, us, make it really important for us to make sure that this information isn't leaked, doesn't get abused, misused, seen by people who are not supposed to see it, and so on. And the third one is compatibility. I will add one more thing that kind of gets captured in the um, compatibility piece. And I would say the big thing that most customers think about is performance and latency. Everyone seems to think that they have really fast everything when they manage it themselves, but suddenly because it's in the cloud, it's going to be slower. Um, and it could be true, depending on the last mile. Uh, but that is one of the things that people like to think about and consider when they go to the cloud. But I would say at, at, you know, with, a, with a high degree of consistency and commonality, these are the reasons why people either want to move to the cloud or why they're skeptical about moving to the cloud. And it's interesting because if you take security, for example, once customers and all of us go and take a look at what our data center looks like and then go and look at somebody else's data center like a vendor that's doing this for a living, they quickly realize that the level of depth in terms of security architecture, policy, monitoring, tracking, tools, technology that they have applied is probably far higher and greater and more secure than they are able to do themselves. Again, because of the economics of having to do this once for multiple customers and users versus you do it for your own business, maybe for one part of the business. And it's, it's a lot more expensive to do that. Now, how many of you use hosted email personally? Show of hands. I'm surprised, actually. I was expecting to see 100 people, I mean 100%. How many of you use some form of hosted mail to run your business or the business that you're part of? Wow. Probably just a couple of hands. So that's, that's surprising to me. Because when you look at it in aggregate, at least when it comes to email, not some of the other applications, What's interesting is that India is actually not far behind in its adoption of cloud. And you see some statistics out there. Um, so it is surprising that this audience does not reflect that. But um, it, is, it is something that we, at least the folks that are within the, 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 this community that are part of the vendor group, probably see this more and how quickly different segments of the market are, is gro are, are growing. And it's a substantial market already. 
It's not a small insignificant part of the market. Within that market, when you look at some of the things that businesses are trying to do, and the number one reason why uh, people look at moving some of these applications is to improve business productivity, there are a few things that are happening at the same time with or without the impact of cloud. And I won't go through every one of those, but I'll give you one or two that are um, you know, have been around on the fringe, but are coming up more and more these days. And the first one is consumerization. And it's a little bit related to that whole idea of multi-generational. I was talking to a customer yesterday who said, you know, we have historically given devices. We have paid for devices. We have given devices to our employees. And the IT, this was the CFO of a company, and the, uh, the, one of the senior IT managers were looking at it and says, you know, we really have to think about compatibility because we've got now the next wave of devices that we have to buy for a new set of employees that we have recently hired, and it's trying to refresh the first set of devices we gave somebody about two years ago. And the CFO said, you have to stop thinking like that. He says, we've got a new generation of employees who actually want to have their own choice on what device to use, and they would prefer to bring their own device in. And so we are going to start, rather than buying devices and giving them to the employees, we will actually give every employee a certain amount of budget, and they're free to bring their device in. And you've heard the term probably a lot, BYOD, bring your own device, consumerization of IT. I actually thought this would be a lot slower to take off in India for a variety of reasons. It is surprisingly, uh, at least in corporate India, uh, and if some of you read the newspaper about two months ago, even in government India, uh, the Karnataka government actually was, was pushing to do some of this for their own uh, you know, folks in the, ML, the, uh, the uh, Legislative Council and the Assembly. So that's one thing that's really changing what it means for a business to deal with business productivity, how each of their employees in every department are going to be productive. The second thing that's happening is that more and more businesses are actually in a situation where they are distributed because they've either acquired a company in a different part of the uh, a company in a different part of the country, expanded beyond the shores of India, and or just the nature of the business is such that they need salespeople and or customer service representatives in multiple cities, multiple locations. And all of a sudden, because we live in a world where the customer expects, expects us to respond quickly, as opposed to saying, I'll get back to you in three days, you need information anywhere, anytime. And that's part of the reason also that fuels this consumerization of IT. We're all used to having access to our, you know, it used to be just email, now it's more than that. It used to be just SMS. We're now used to having and want to, and we actually have a withdrawal symptom when we don't get uh, access to the information because the internet, the consumer internet, has made it possible and made it part of our daily lives. So we're beginning to expect the same that our workplace and our business function will allow us to do. So that's the second thing that's uh, completely, I would say, driving a change in how businesses have to view productivity. And the third one, which is relevant, you know, large part to today's discussion, is the rise of the cloud. The one thing that's unique, though, is that it's interesting to see how very large companies that have an existing investment in IT, their own data center, a very large IT staff, investment in customized applications, versus a new, smaller business that is just beginning on the path of technology adoption, how they view the cloud. One has a vested interest in trying to figure out how to make that existing investment last, and the small company says, you know what, it's like, not having a landline and going straight, straight to wireless, I don't really care to buy my own servers, install software, hire an IT person and manage it. I'll just go to the cloud. This, the larger companies typically have an issue that I will talk about a little bit, uh, but the cloud is definitely playing in the IT decision-making process, as you probably all know, across the full range of the spectrum. I'm going to skip the details of each one of these, but this just gives you a little bit more. Gartner had a very aggressive, prop, uh, and it may be true in some parts of the world, but that last one talked about by 2012, which is this year, 20% of um, businesses will have 
their you know, IT assets in the cloud, which I think was, was really aggressive. The thing that's germane to today's discussion is how quickly productivity is moving to the cloud. And here you see some statistics of the kinds of workloads. We, you know, workloads is just a, a term that, that you may or may not recognize, but you can think of them as technology areas uh, or capabilities that are moving to the cloud relative to some other things. And like I said, we always assumed that CRM was actually the first one and the, probably the biggest SaaS application that moved to the cloud. Well, it turns out, web conferencing, collaboration, and email, and to some extent it makes sense. Because if you think about web conferencing, desktop sharing, IM, we expect those things to work 24 by 7 throughout the year, any time of day or night. Email has become like that. It's not like you say, okay, you know what, I'm going home at 5 o'clock, I probably won't check my email till 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. It doesn't happen. You go on a plane, you stand in a bus, you walk on the street, you walk, look at people in the car, and they're all going like this. Right? So they're constantly expecting the information to be there. And for that, you need a level of robust infrastructure with very high degrees of availability, reliability, which is very expensive to maintain and operate. And therefore, it kind of makes sense to have a utility type thing available to you that's run by someone, like electricity. And so it's not surprising to have things like web conferencing, but what's happening, and messaging, but what's happening is because of the need for high degree of collaboration in a distributed environment where more and more people, people being employees, are mobile, collaboration and access to documents and working together on documents is reaching the same level of necessity. I need it to be available to me wherever I am, any time of the day or night, because I need access to it. And so collaboration and content management, document management, processes are also moving uh, very quickly to the cloud. Everybody's got probably multiple ways they're going to solve this problem. Um, I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about what we uh, believe uh, is the vision that we think is the right way for businesses of all sizes to adopt and, and kind of jump on this bandwagon of how business productivity will look like over the coming years. And we started this journey building on about 30 years of experience. As you know, many of you probably use Microsoft Office. Um, we started out on the productivity train about 30, 35 years ago. And thanks to working very closely with companies of literally every size, from global corporations to very small new businesses and consumers, we have understood what kinds of things people want. And so the product and the technology and the solution have evolved uh, from the desktop onto the server and now into services. But we've basically broken it up into two things. At the base, you see the different types of capabilities. These capabilities will continue to add, will continue to evolve and expand, because needs of business in terms of what they want to automate to be more productive uh, keep, keep increasing. But the focus is primarily on these two things. One of them is how do we make it possible for employees of different usage profiles in any kind of business to get the best experience no matter what device they want to use. It used to be that we were trained and programmed to think that we had to be at a desktop when we did word processing. And that was a quantum leap over using a typewriter. And we never assumed that we would actually be able to sit in a bus or a car or a train and actually watch someone doing a presentation on a little device that had a screen about four inches long. But that's the expectation today. Again, going back to because of the fact that we're all used to having that experience from a consumer standpoint, because of things like YouTube and a variety of other uh, technologies that came to market, we expect the same to happen. And therefore, the focus is how do you make it possible? And that's what we have invested in, in what we deliver through the cloud. Which brings me to the second point. And especially when I look at companies that have some sort of IT infrastructure in place already, they think very carefully about whether I actually want to pull the plug and move everything to the cloud, and does that even make sense for me? Classic example is a bank. Let's say a bank has a you know, large corporate headquarters, data center managed by a large IT staff, sensitive information makes little sense for them to yank that out, turn it off, and say, I'll throw everything to the cloud. 
But when they look at some of the new branches they're adding, especially ones in remote locations where it's hard to get an IT um, staff to, to you know, hire them, let alone stay and retain, or because you want to be able to do these things quickly so it's hard to spin up the infrastructure in each one of these locations, it makes a lot of sense for them to say, I'll keep my on-premise data center at the corporate headquarters, but for everything else, I will use the cloud. And that's an example of what I mean by cloud on your terms, really allowing companies and businesses to make the choice of what goes to the cloud and what stays on premise and what actually might end up being a hybrid environment. And at least what we're finding is in larger companies, more and more the reality is that for the foreseeable future, the world will be hybrid. Anyone who says that it's going to be completely cloud is being very optimistic. And anyone who says it's going to be, you know, nobody's going to move the cloud is actually, I think, going to be out of a job soon. And that gives me, brings me to, to a couple of slides on Office 365, which is our version of productivity in the cloud. We like to think it offers the best productivity experience. Um, the unique thing about this is that it takes all of proven enterprise class technology for the areas of messaging, collaboration, document management, unified communications, things like web conferencing and chat, things that businesses have been using now in large enterprise scale to run businesses and is now available in the cloud to a business of any size. So there are a couple of advantages. One of them is that you get the benefits of the, you know, the elasticity of the cloud, all of the benefits the cloud gives you, but you're not losing the commercial proven enterprise class capability of something that's been around for many, many years. And the second thing is that now small and medium businesses for whom it would probably be too expensive and hard to afford this kind of implementation for themselves can now get the exact same capabilities as their larger brethren. So a large 50, you know, 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 person company deploys something like this, but a small two person shop can get the exact same capabilities at a price that they can afford because they only have to pay for the users that they sign up, which is you know, the beauty of the cloud. I put this up for a couple of reasons. If you go back to the first slide, I talked about some of the drivers for why people do it, and they always, you know, the thinking was always we save money. This is going to be much cheaper than doing it ourselves, cheaper than on-premise. And that's kind of true, as you see from the first couple of examples. Infinity Retail, people who are actually better known as Chroma, it's a Tata company, um, expanding very rapidly. They've been around for six years. Um, very quickly decided uh, you know, to move to the cloud as a way to enable all of their stores and all the employees in their stores. In their, in their case, they actually look at, looked at it as we could go and build out our own IT infrastructure or we could use the benefits of the cloud. And for them, it was clearly a IT cost decision. And they found that it's a lot cheaper, in this case, as much as 25% over the life of um, how they calculated uh, what it would be to manage their own, to implement and manage their own, versus using the cloud. For Dabur, who all, all of you also know, again, a company that's, um, you know, the representative of, of many other companies who may not be in the FMCG space. Manufacturing, packaging, multiple locations, multiple products, got salespeople and product people, you know, all of that stuff. In their case, they really had, were looking at the speed of how quickly, this is the agility part. In one and a half months, we had eight locations up and running. And this is the thing I hear over and over again. It's surprising to me, actually I was shocked about a year ago, or maybe 14 months ago, when I had a CIO tell, tell me that it took them, and this may be, I thought it may be an exception. I learned later on when I repeated this example that it's not an exception, it's actually the norm. But in this particular instance, they said, if I have to bring up 100 new email boxes, because I've just hired um, new employees, it takes me about six to eight weeks to be able to get the thing done. Why? Because I have to provision the server, I mean, I have to procure, you know, I have to get the procurement process. 
done. It's not so much the IT implementation. It's the process within the organization. You can actually provision 100 new mailboxes in five, min in, in five minutes if you have the users adding themselves. But let's say, you know, roughly takes about 15 to 20 minutes for the whole thing to be done versus six to eight weeks. So it's a dramatic difference uh, in terms of what you can do with the cloud. And then the third example um, is actually one where yeah, I met this customer and their core competency and their core business is about managing cell towers around the country and now in a couple of other countries as well. And what he was saying was he says the beauty of this is now I lo no longer have to have my IT staff run around with pagers responding to problems with email boxes and getting people, you know, restoring their files. They're actually focusing on my core business, which is developing software to manage cell towers. That's what they do today. And so that's, that's the benefit for them, and it was a top-line thing. What Microsoft Office 365 is, is this set of familiar proven technologies that's available. It spans the things uh, that I talked about in the earlier slide in terms of content management, web conferencing, collaboration, and so on. And is part of a much larger set of things. So as a company, as a business, as a partner, if you're looking at how do I solve cloud all the way from the infrastructure to the, to the SaaS piece, you have options that work really well together. And I won't dwell on this, but I just wanted to give you a sense of how comprehensively we're thinking about uh, the cloud. The things that, that is unique about this, and this is where I think it, it's important that when you look at solutions, when you look at productivity in particular, that it is very unique to the size of the organization and has to be tailored. It's not a one-size-fits-all type of solution. And if you run it on-premise, like many of you do, you recognize that. And the nice thing about Office 365 is that we have actually allowed for that. We've worked on being able to do um, offerings and service packs that are designed to work for different usage profiles. Like a bank teller might be someone who occasionally uses email, doesn't do a lot of content creation, doesn't do massive PowerPoint presentations. They don't need the full featured thing. They need something lightweight and less expensive. But someone sitting in the corporate headquarters doing an investment pitch book at the bank, they need something far richer because they're going to do massive documents to, and prospectuses and presentations. They're a you know, full-blown knowledge book. And so you've got options for both. And then, the, you know, the la one thing, I'll, last thing I'll mention on this slide is the fact that, un especially in the new world, we're traditionally used to thinking about software licensed by device. It installs on my PC. That no longer makes sense going forward because every one of us has four devices, three minimally, and we'll probably have more. And so this one is, you know, it gives you the flexibility of having that exact experience because it's licensed by user accessible from all your devices. One of the things that we focus on a lot, and this is the point that I said, I think customers really worry about the fact that is it secure, is it reliable, is it available? Um, what happens if it goes down? And a lot of thought and work and investment has gone in to make sure that availability and financially backed availability. So if it goes down, we pay you money back. It's not like we just say, sorry, thank you very much. We'll give you another month worth of free services. We will give you money back. That's how seriously we take this stuff. Because we realize this is a commercial operation. You're running a business on it. Examples of some customers uh, globally that have used uh, this stuff. But again, the point of this was less to you know, boast about the, the brand names and the logos, but the fact that worldwide, there is a tremendous move towards taking technologies, especially for business productivity, and moving them to the cloud. And you saw some examples of India as well. Um, because co companies are realizing that to address those things that are happening that I showed you in the future of productivity trends, they need to be able to leverage the cloud to effectively address those for the different kinds of things that, that, that are happening in terms of what their employee base expects. And then a shameless plug at the end of it, there's a free trial available for anybody that's interested in trying it out. You just go to that site and you'll be able to get yourself a 30-day free trial. It takes minutes to set up a login and a user ID for yourself. 
uh, and you get the full set of capabilities. This is not a limited trial as in functionality. You get access to the full functionality, and you can try it out. And so I think with that, I'm going to stop since I've probably gone over by a couple of minutes. Thank you. Yep, okay. I'm uh, afraid we'll not have time for uh, questions right now. However, you can send an email to him offline or uh, email it to us, and we'll have it addressed to him afterwards. Absolutely. And uh, thank you so much, Sanjay. On behalf of uh, UBM, we'd like to offer you a small token of our appreciation. Thank you. Thanks. And by the way, you will find a lot of information on that site if, for those of you who noted it down, but feel free to send questions my way. Thanks.